Namaste and welcome to the channel Khoj Patra. From the last six years, we have been working on art, history and culture. And today we have a special guest. His name is Peter Makela. He is a Fulbright scholar here in Nepal. He's from the USA. And we're going to talk with him regarding his exhibition and the works that he has been doing in Nepal. Peter, first thing first, how would you like to introduce yourself as an artist, uh, as a scholar? How, what's your take on it? Just a person. Just a person, right. I, I, I don't, I mean, I'd say artist, but uh, scholar is maybe a little up there for me. I like to be pretty simple. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But since I've, um, I'd say, painted and drawn almost every day since I was four, I'd say artist. Mm -hmm. So, how would you like to define your artworks? Uh, define is like a, I like things to be open and not for for the Nepali Nepali artist or the for the Nepali art lovers who do not know what kind of works you are going through, what kind of works that you do. How would you like to introduce yourself and your artworks for them? I think um, I maybe talking a little bit about what I do would be helpful. Yeah? Like, uh, so, I have a daily practice of painting discussion. I'm not so interested in painting a literal scholar, or a, I'm not a weatherman. I'm interested in kind of painting an experience of the sky and of what directly, the relationship between of looking and experience. So, the more I look at the sky without concepts or without plans, Different colors emerge, different temperature, temperature, saturation, values are happening, and so I'm responding to what I'm seeing. And then the sky changes, and then I'm responding to what I see there. So it's this kind of tapestry of experiences, which is more, more maybe closely related to an inner sky than an outer sky. Uh, maybe something like this, um, but I'm very interested in all these paintings are explorations of. Uh, space and light, which I also feel in a lot of ways maybe a lot of painting traditions are based on that. So the explorations and lines that you said, uh, is there any definite name that you have given to the paintings that you have done so far? I'm working on like two series. So there's a land series and a sky series. So I, I keep, I'm interested in this kind of uh, freedom through discipline having a general kind of theme and then having a wide spectrum of experience and styles develop through that one discipline series. But beyond that, I don't really like to define that so, so, there's one artist, Van Gogh, who has drawn a different kind of imageries based on his dreams and so on. Do you find any kind of proximity to the works that you have done with the works that he was doing? Uh, not so much. I'd be interested in, in the, the correspondences you see, because he wouldn't be the first that I, I think of. I respect him greatly. Respect him greatly. Um, but in that kind of maybe different painters in that same era, I think maybe there's a closer, closer relationship like um like they were the first ones to paint plain air basically so they would go out and they'd paint nature and light directly so that i definitely feel there's a connection so i'm continuing that <laughs> like these paintings of skies i'm not doing in the studio i'm doing them directly looking at the sky so so they were the first painters to really do that um he was very interested in color um, but his paintings are kind of like I feel like his stroke and his hand is very deliberate and not aggressive, but you know, there's something about this which I feel that actually my hand is more searching. I feel like the, I'm not necessarily trying to say one planned thing, which is kind of discovered. So it's more free in that way. I also feel that 
the color is, his color is staccato, like there's a pattern or a line next to another one. These are kind of the tapestry, and there's a kaleidoscope of how the, they're mixed and on top of each other in a very different way. So like in that same kind of, like I think they might be more aligned with Monet or Bonal or Villar, who are all his con contemporaries. But yeah, there's, there's some, mm -hmm. there's some association. Yes. What actually triggers you to make the kind of paintings that you make. I mean, you look at the sky, the sky normally looks different, no? So what actually is it that triggers you? I don't, uh, the sky looks different. Yes. Every day or in paintings or what, what's different? Even in paintings and even in, while you see through your naked eyes, you're an artist and you see it the different way. And I see it a different way. Everyone sees it a different way. Um, that's the thing. And, it, and it's different if you actually look for a long time, if you look quickly. And this is what's so interesting about color is that no one sees the same color. Uh, a third of men are colorblind. Mm. Uh, women have 125 to 75 more rods and cones in their eyes in general. So they, women have much more sensitivity to color. Men see movement. Men see a lot of gray. I mean, most, a third of men can't see violet. So I have no idea. I can only talk about my own experience of looking. Mm -hmm. And when I look at something for a long time, I'm actually seeing how these different colors and spaces and light interact. And it's not, a, especially when I look at it without thinking of it as an object. If I look at a sky and I say, this is a sky, or this is a plant, or this is this, then I put it in a box. If I'm actually really looking at it, how does this color sit next to this, and what is this? Totally different experience. So that's what I, I try to do with these paintings. Mm -hmm. So you see it for a long time, right? Yeah. And I also feel that the more, I've, I've painted skies for like three or four years. So the first paintings were really bad. They, they, weren't, uh, they weren't searching, they weren't looking. I was painting an idea of a sky. The more I look at it, the more I open up to just light and space. Light and space is created through the five colors and how they interact. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. mm -hmm. As an artist, could you tell me some of the basic traits or the traits that you follow while you are painting? Basic traits of I just like freedom. Yeah. Freedom and spontaneity. I try not to plan, I try not to think. Like like really try to have these be like non-conceptual paintings um, and are very experimental, but also like um, rhythm. How do brush strokes, how do the color kind of create it? Like I'm really interested in how they sound. Everything is color for me, color interaction, how the colors kind of sit on top, like many layers and how to, I'm very interested in optical mixing. How, like, if you have four colors together in a certain way, then the viewer's eye actually creates that color. Um, so, yeah, definitely very much how color is interwoven is very important to me. Especially painting a sky that's atmospheric. It's, there's not a hard edge of an object. It's just, you know, it's just this openness. Mm -hmm. I, I really say, like, yeah, spontaneity, rhythm, and color. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, Peter, could you tell me the process? You look at the sky for a long time, and after you come to the empty canvas, how do you process or how do you visualize the painting itself before it is made? What is the process like that you go through? That's a good question. Uh, I look at the sky and I see a color, and I mix a color and I put it down. And then Maybe I'll look a little over and then I mix another color and put it down. And once I put that color down the next other color, it changes. So it's literally just building color next to color. And color also only exists as a shape. So based on the size of the brush or how it's laid. And then it, it really is like a patchwork. It starts to develop that way. And then I'll kind of go around and then add another color to the existing color on top of it to change how that is. So it's kind of like a puzzle. Mm -hmm. And then it kind of takes a life of its own. Mm -hmm. And then a kind of light source or a space or a rhythm or a movement um, develops in, its, in, in the logic of that own piece, mm -hmm. which each one's different.
Oh yeah, there's no plan. Mm -hmm. and there's no visualization, mm -hmm. just, it just happens. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, here's one of your paintings down there. That's one, yeah. Yes. Uh, could you tell me the process that you went through while you were making it? The process, the general process, like you said before. Uh, could you be more specific on what you've done in this particular so, painting? So usually, like, a lot of times, like, painting for me, it's general to specific. So I start with, like, a bigger, bigger relationships of color um, color spots just next to each other, something like this. And then it'll be like, uh, then through that, then when I'm looking deeper, I'll see like reds inside of a green, oranges inside of a yellow. And then so different strokes of that painting will come on top after that, and that creates its own kind of rhythm and light. Um, and then basically it will just, I will just continue painting until, um, it feels like there's a light source or that there's a spaciousness or there's some experience that arises and then it's done. It's, it's yeah. And the, when it's done, it's not, it's not a logical thing, it's just a feeling. Mm -hmm. And uh, I feel like opinions have their own kind of conclusion where there's, it's not necessarily a resolution, but something happens. And if it's not satisfactory, if I paint again, if I put one stroke on top of it, I have to change everything. Mm -hmm. So again, comes to the subject. Mm -hmm. So uh, let's move on to the land paintings. What triggered you in the first place to do it or to make it? Because yeah, because I painted a long time. Like so years, I have many different kind of interests, and, uh, different visual languages. So painting the sky all of the time is uh, enriching and, and wonderful. But I also have other sides. And also in studying um, Buddhist philosophy and understandings of emptiness, it's not just, you, you know, form it can also be an aspect of emptiness. So I didn't want to limit myself to just kind of space and luminosity, like there's other elements to this. And uh, it's also, but there's a relationship to these land paintings where I paint a sky first, and then I will, um, I kind of make these kind of ribbons and then I kind of mask those ribbons. And then I paint more ribbons and then mask those. And then when I pull it all off, it's something I could never have planned. So it's it's still this kind of this discovery. And then the forms kind of naturally arise. And then I'm, it's also these paintings are kind of an exercise in non-attachment. Uh, because sometimes there's a form I like or something that anchors it and I'll just paint over it the next day. But I can't, why I'm interested in those paintings is because none of them are planned. There's no sketches for them. What arises, arises. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, Peter, you've been in Nepal for a long time now. Around how many months? Eight, eight months. Eight months. So, you had a chance to interact with the Nepali art scene, mm -hmm. with the Nepali artist. Sure. So, where do you think the Nepali art scene is moving on here in Nepal? I'm impressed. I'm impressed by it. And I think that um, it's a very interesting challenge to balance very ancient and powerful tradition with innovation. And uh, it's something I think is really not easy to do. And there's many artists that have taken that on and have done a great job. So I'm, I'm impressed with how it's going. And uh, like in you know, the Biennale this year, First time the falls represented, I think that's wonderful. Mm. So, I also think a lot of the traditional art that is still being um, kept alive is also incredibly valuable. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, like the cave painters and tiger painters, I deeply I have so much respect for. Mm. And I think it's wonderful that those traditions also are being continued. Mm -hmm. uh, you also had chance to share your knowledge with the students of KU regarding colors. What was your observation and what was it all about? Some of them are really good. I, I was really um, impressed by the students. And I was impressed by like, um, like really good people. And it's kind of like, it was, I felt like how they treat each other was like a family and was felt very different than other college settings I've been around. So that was really nice to witness. And yeah, it was like, so Joseph Albers, um, 
and created this color course where there's color exercises, color problems, and basically it's very experiential. It's not about concepts or ideas about this. You literally sit down with like 315 colors, and the first exercise is you make um, three colors look like four colors. And so you do that by trial and error, and you do that by just play. Uh, so it's really interesting. And these second year students I was uh, working with, none of them have done that exercise before. And it's really interesting to see kind of you know, light bulbs kind of go off in their heads. And uh, early on, like, because when I shared the presentation, they're like, three colors of four, what does that mean? And then when they were doing it, like, after a while, they started to understand how to do it. And then some of them got really good. And then the next day we did uh, four colors that look like three colors, which is much more challenging. But some of the students who weren't so interested in the first day, whatever happened the next day, they were like actually the best ones. And they kind of took to it. So that, that was inspiring to me. That was very inspiring. Mm -hmm. So you're running an exhibition in Patan, right? So from when till when the exhibition is going to happen, and what title have you given to the exhibition? So the title is um, Painting the Sky, Painting the Earth. So I will exhibit both sky and land paintings made in the fall of the Sea Coast. And it will be at the Patan Museum, uh, opening this Friday, the 25th, 6th to 9th. And it'll be up for seven days. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And please come, it'll be great to see you there. Mm -hmm. It is necessary for a Nepali artist to go there and witness the exhibition. I don't think it's necessary. I'm not. I'm not that arrogant to say it's necessary to see my paintings. But if people, um, if people are interested in painting or interested in art, I think uh, just as a painter myself, I like to see many different things. Mm -hmm. um, I think just to see because painting ultimately is a limited language of color, form, movement. Um, so to see how people do that differently can always inform one's own work. So mm -hmm. maybe some some uh, artists find it interesting. Mm -hmm. I, I think also, yeah, I mean, and also maybe the color relationships would be interesting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I would definitely not use the word necessary. All right. So do you have any final messages to the Nepali art community based on your observation? I, I, all, all I would say is that I've been lucky to come here three times. Each time, first time, like Nepal and India, 10 months, second time Nepal, five months this time, eight months, I'll be another two months. And um, just that time, I feel like I'm not even scratching the surface of the depth and profundity of Nepal and Nepal's culture. Uh, but what I have seen and what I've been allowed to see and what's been shared with me, I'm deeply impressed by and I respect immensely. And it's an incredibly, the culture here and the vastness of it is rare and is a real gem on the planet, like sincerely. And so, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I just think, I think it's important for people who come from that to be proud of that. <laughs> Be proud of that and to, to carry that on in whatever way, whether that's fully following a tradition or respecting the tradition to innovating, both I think are wonderful and important. Mm -hmm. So, do you have any final words? Come to the show <laughs> Friday, 6 to 9. <laughs> if you like what we are doing, please do like, subscribe our channel. Mm -hmm.